In this video, we're going to look at techniques and tips for writing a maintainable computer program. So on the screen now is a Python example of a very poorly written computer program. So this computer program would not be very easy to maintain. So pause the video for a moment and just see if you can come up with a few reasons as to why this program is so poor in the way it's written. OK, so what did you come up with? Um, a few things jumped to mind here. Uh, all the lines are very compressed. There's no sensible use of blank lines or white spaces to uh, help pull out the various constructs. There's no comments here at all. So you have to fully understand the language and the constructs being used. And the variable names, uh, they're also appalling, all just single letters. So it's very difficult to work out what this program is doing without a lot of studying. So here's um, the Python program, but this one has been written with maintainability in mind. So again, pause the video and see if you can list some factors that make this program much easier to maintain. Well, first we're using comments to divide the program into distinct sections. I can see there are two procedures and I've broken those up with that line there of dashes. It's really visually easy to instantly see where a new subroutine starts and ends. We're also using comments here to explain what various parts of the program are designed to do. Now, it may have gone a little bit overboard in this example. We're certainly not suggesting you provide comments for every line of code that can defeat the object to make the program harder to actually follow. But if you've got a particular complex line of code, it's well worth adding a comment, if not for yourself later on, but for someone else who may then need to understand, maintain or debug your program. We've got rid of all those single letter variable names. We're now using sensible descriptive identifiers, also in the parameters and the names of the subroutines. And we're using sensible indentation. Now, Python forces you to do this. Uh, if you didn't, the program wouldn't compile and many other IDEs out there will do automatic indentation for you when you, for example, use an iteration or a for loop. But it's not always the case and is sometimes left up to the programmer. So that's everything you need to know for the exam. Pause the video and take some notes.